Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Wild Wednesday Live, presented by the Quilt Craft and Sewing Festival and the Quilt Craft Sew Mall. I'll be your host this week. Again, I'm Raylene, for those of you that are new with us. Um, you know, we're back in the studio after an incredible week at our first show back in Boise last week. I can't even tell you guys how great it was <clears throat> to see people face to face in person and actually have human interaction. I mean, the show was fantastic. Our attendees were amazing. And, you know, Beth and I had uh, challenged everybody that was coming out to the show. If they came up and told us that they get wild with us on Wednesday, we had a gift for them. And we were overwhelmed at how many people uh, joined in that fun. And, you know, because we have to get as much laughter out of everything as we can. The most fun was watching Beth because she made the people go to her teenage son and say, I got wild with you. And it, it was hysterical. The poor guy, we just abused him to no end, but it was all for our pleasure because we got a big kick out of it. Um, if you missed it, if you didn't see our three days of live, starting with a behind the scenes look at setup and then two more great days of lives, they are now posted on our YouTube channel, Quilt Craft Sew Mall, so be sure you check those out. And for those of you who are going to the Oklahoma City Show, and again, that is June 17th, 18th, and 19th, we are going to be doing the lives once again, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we'll remind you before we get to that point, but we're also going to have those special gifts, uh, gifts rather for anybody that comes and talks to us at the show. Now, we want to remind you that all of our vendors today are offering special discounts, and those are going to be good until tomorrow night at midnight. So if you see anything you can't live without, you don't want to hesitate. Just go to the quiltcraftsomall.com click on the Wild Wednesday logo, and that will take you to all four of our vendors that are presenting today. <clears throat> now remember, if you have questions during the show, we ask that you please hold those till the end. Um, we are gonna bring all of our vendors back for a question and answer period, but if you type your question in too soon, I might miss it. Uh, I might not see it, it might just scroll by. And I don't wanna miss any questions that anybody has. So be sure again, if you've got questions, wait till the end. Um, if it's just something real simple, we do have a couple of monitors that might be able to help you out. But if it's specific to the vendor, be sure you wait. And uh, you know, we always like to remind you that <clears throat> We are actually streaming live over the internet and occasionally we have issues. Anybody that's watched the news lately, you know that it's just crazy. Sometimes you have a great connection with someone and it just drops. So we just go with the flow the best we can. If someone drops out, we'll have them log back in. And if for whatever reason their connection is really bad, we'll just stop them and reschedule them to come back at a later time. Um, but again, if you are seeing a bad connection or hearing bad, we're seeing and hearing the exact same thing you are and we're just we're just doing the best we can with today's technology and again if you ever miss a live show don't fret just go to our youtube channel quilt craft so mall and uh, you can see all the past episodes from the very first one we did over six months ago Okay, let me see if I've got all of our business out of the way here. Oh, okay. Now, if you guys watched last week, you know that we were not able to do our door prizes because it was just way too crazy at the show. So I promised on air that we were going to do extra door prizes today. So instead of just five, there's going to be 10. Are you loving that? So for those of you that are new with us, Later in the show, I'm going to give you a secret word that you will type in the comments, and that is all you have to do to be entered into today's Door Pies drawing. Then check back right here on this Facebook page about usually about six o'clock tonight, and I will have posted all the winners along with what to do if you won. And really, it's just a matter of emailing me your mailing address so we can send you your prize, and all that will be on that post. So here's the great prizes that we have today. Um, we are going to start with uh, Suzanne from Calico Cupboard is giving away a pattern and the fabric to do a project that she's going to be showing us. Uh, Bonash Barrel is going to be donating a Fuse and Press. We have three pairs of Laurel Birch socks from uh, Beyond Interiors. We have patterns from the Colorado Creations Quilting. And uh, we have two a two pack of nesting templates from Just Notions. And then I'm going to be giving away a two pack of square ups. I also have a Notions grab bag, a needle grab bag, um, a quick, quick, quick 
clip and pin cover combo set, easy for me to say, and two digital patriotic panels. So again, 10 people are going to win a prize today. So this is a good day to be watching Wild Wednesday. All right. I think we finally got all the housekeeping out of the way. So we are ready to bring in our first vendor for today. And we are so excited to welcome back Suzanne from the Calico Cupboard. She is going to be showing one of my favorite uh, idea, a favorite crafts, favorite quilting item, whatever you want to call it, but just one of my favorite projects. I'm so excited to have her showing it today. So Suzanne, are you with us? I'm ready. Yay, she is ready to go. We're so glad to have you back. Hey, how's the weather up there in your mountain area? Oh, it's beautiful. If, if you don't mind the pollen, it's great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's been an issue all over. It was a little polleny in Boise, too. Anybody that came to the show saw me sneezing and wheezing the whole time we were there. But, of course, back here in Arizona, I'm still doing the same thing. So, <laughs> so anyway, so we're excited. So go right ahead, Suzanne. Take it okay, away. Show great. us what you've got. So the pollen's affecting me. If I start coughing, I have cough drops handy and some water. But welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Wild Wednesdays Live today. Another uh, presentation from the Calico Cupboard. Thanks to uh, Quilt Craft So, all those folks that are involved. We really do appreciate you. And boy, are we ready to get back to in-person shows. We'll be joining the Quilt Craft Sewing Festivals in August and September. Uh, Sacramento, Phoenix, Pleasanton, and San Bernardino. So look for the schedules and come see us. Today I'd like to share with you a technique for making items using something called prairie points. And many of you may already be familiar with prairie points because you've used them to accent a tote bag like mine here or quilt, sorry, or, or garment. So you may be familiar, but for those of you who aren't, I'm going to share with you a, a new technique, and we're going to be talking about some projects. Here's a square pot holder, and we'll do a round one also. Here's a mug, I'm sorry, oven mitt. And then we have the real pretty table topper centerpiece. And here's that round pot holder I was talking about. So I'm going to talk to you about how to do the prairie points and how to get these items completed. And at the end, we had a surprise visit from the UPS man today. So I have some new projects to show you. They just arrived and I'm real excited about that. So to get started, what is a prairie point? Well, a prairie point is a square of fabric. And in some cases, we're going to use a rectangle, but square of fabric folded in half. And then I like to draw a line down the down the center, and then I'm going to fold the corners in to that line. And this makes a nice sharp triangle, and that's called a prairie point. Now, if you're going to use or make an item like that table topper I showed you that has a lot of different layers, you're going to use an abbreviated prairie point. This is a four by five inch rectangle, and so you fold the top down one and a half inches. You have an inch here left that's not double, and again, your line down the middle, fold it. And then when you sew all those layers together, it's not quite so bulky around uh, across the bottom here. So that's an abbreviated one. So to get started, what do you need? You need your pattern, and we have patterns for all the items that I showed you. And if once you've completed the pattern, which also includes the template, if you'd like more templates, we also have packages that have just the template. So you don't have to repurchase the pattern. Each pattern includes one of these templates. And it's made from interfacing. I printed out on my printer just to show you a darker version of this. This is regular paper, which I wouldn't use. But you can see there's uh, 90 degree lines and 45 degree lines and then circles. And the circles are where you're going to place your fabrics. So to get started, I'm going to tip this down so you can see what I'm doing, I hope. Oh, so you also need fabric and some other items like a marking pencil, Insel Bright, which is insulated batting, a glue stick, fabric glue, and thread. And I like to use monofilament thread on the top of my sewing machine, regular fab, regular thread on the bobbin. But this way, I don't have to change colors of thread every time, every time I change a fabric. So monofilament thread. So you need those things as well as your fabric and your pattern. So to get started, you place your template face up on your table and then the pattern calls for you to put a square in the center and that's where I use the glue stick to adhere that 
center, that square to the center. And then you're going to start with row one. And these are usually smaller. So you have your prairie points and your line marked down the middle. So first thing I do is put a, 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 a bead of glue down the center of the back. So down the center of the back. And that goes on the 90 degree lines. There's four of these that go on all the way around. And by putting the, the fabric glue on, then you keep those pieces in place because now once you get them all on there and situated, you're going to open this up and then you're going to stitch down that center line that you drew. That keeps them all in place. Okay, moving on to layer two. And you'll have a circular line on your template that shows you layer two. Again, you glue down the back, place it on the line that says layer two, and those go all the way around. Oops, I started with the wrong fabric. Okay, here's layer two, and those go all the way around. Every other one goes on the straight line or the 90 degree line. The others, the next one goes on the 45 degree line till you get all the way around. And then a four, you can sew on the center line. Once you get those all sewn in place, then you're ready for layer three. And I didn't cut all eight, but uh, you'll get the idea. So here goes layer three. And again, you're gonna put glue on the back and then stitch down the center to hold them in place. And you're ready to move on to layer four. And again, I didn't cut them all, but you'll see at layer four. Gluing as you put them down, hold them in place and stitch all those. At this point, you're ready to trim up your finished item as you got all four layers on it. So you're gonna stitch on top, uh, the outside edge on the line that they give you and trim away any extra of your uh, template interfacing and the little dog ears that stick out. And then you're ready for your info fleece. So you lay that down, or first your backing fabric, and then your insole fleece, and then the top that you finished, which may look like this. You're gonna stitch all the way around the outside edge, as well as stitching through on some of these points. Now, some of them I sew all the way down because I don't want them coming up, but others I've left open a little bit, like the table topper. These are loose here, but they're not gonna come loose because they're glued and they're stitched. Then you're ready for your binding. And for the curved edges, for instance, like the, the rounded edge of the oven mitt or the, the pot holder or the table topper, you wanna use a bias binding. And um, I like to cut my bindings two and a half inches wide because that gives me a nice full binding. As you know, a lot of the times, and I'm gonna tip this back up. A lot of the times the outside edge of your item will, will wear more than the inside edge. So I like to use a two and a half inch wide uh, binding for my bindings. And the straight edges, like on the square um, hot pad, you can use a regular straight binding. So that finishes your, um, your um, prairie points. Then, as I told you, we got some new things today that I'd like to share with you. The first one is this real timely, kind of cute um, 24 by 44 inch wide panel, and it's called um, Save the Day, and it honors all our first responders, police and fire and helicopters, emergency helicopters, and people who work in hospitals. And there's two coordinates that go with it. Have a all over print that I'll be putting on the back, and then some printed borders. And the really interesting thing about this fabric is it glows in the dark and it doesn't wash out. So you wash it, it still glows in the dark. So that's real fun for those little kiddos, gives them a little extra interest. And um, a couple of Wild Wednesdays ago, I did a presentation about mud mats. And we've sent gotten um, some real cute pa patterns for mug mats. And the nice thing about them is in addition to the pattern, you also get these panels that are included. 
for you to put in your mug mats that you make. And they're real encouraging things like, be your own kind of beautiful. And this is my favorite here. A balanced, a balanced diet means a cupcake in each hand. And I really like that one. And this one has a lot of nice things about kindness and um, quilting. So remember, each of those panels is, is included in the pattern. In addition, we also got in some new six inch um, art panels. And many of you have ordered these from me before. As you can see, this one is um, Iris and a Hummingbird. And this one is Sisters by Chance, Friends by Choice. And uh, the last new one, happiness is quilting to my heart's consent. And isn't that the truth? Kept me sane. We also got in um, this um, two and a half inch wide strip package from New Hewitt. And this would be really good if you're gonna do uh, something that has a rainbow design, like the quilt behind me, whoops, wrong side, quilt behind me, or that table topper, or the um, hot pad that I showed you. So this one is 40 strips and they're, it's $39. And from the same company with all these different colors is a layer cake. It's $40 and there's 42 10 inch squares in each package. So those are new. And speaking of that kind of thing, here's a companion to the quilt behind me. This is called Come Fly With Me. And it's a table runner and it's made of also using two and a half inch wide strips and you could use that um, rainbow one to make this It'd be really pretty. Here's a new pattern called Blueberry Cobbler. And these are these are cool. They're only $2.50 a piece. So that's great. Uh, what else? Oh, all right. As you know, some of us Southern California folks are Dodger fans. And they're the world champions this year, thankfully. So we got some LA Dodgers Mickey Mouse fabric, as well as some baseballs for y'all. Now the baseball season is back. Aren't we happy to be able to go to games in person? And here's some LA Dodgers. This is 60 inches wide, so this is super. Um, and the fabrics that I was using for those rainbow looking items, we have the ombre, and this goes from dark pink to yellow and back again. And then the other color away we have is purplish, blue, green, and yellow, and back again. So a quarter yard of this will make a couple of those uh, projects that I showed you. So I think that's everything I covered. I hope I didn't go through too fast, and I didn't go past my time. I'd no, like to thank no. you all for, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in person, and remember, keep calm and stitch on. That was awesome, Suzanne. I, I just, I love that stuff. It's what I've always been, my eye has always gone to that type of project. But I also, I love that first responder panel you showed. What a lot of our viewers probably don't know and what she would never brag on herself, but I'm going to brag on her. But she's one of, uh, we have a handful of vendors who are actually retired nurses and first responders. And she spent a lot of years <laughs> helping an awful lot of people. And now she's helping us with quilting. So it's just in her blood. So, so Suzanne, I hope you'll stick around till the end for the question and answer. And we thank you so much for being back on. Thank you. I'll be here. All right, great. Okay, guys, it's that time that I absolutely love in the show. It's time for roll call. I know a few guys, a few of you were already punching it in, but we'd just like to see where everybody's watching from today. And it looks like we've got a good sized crowd. So type in where you're watching from just so we can see where we're reaching everybody. All right, up next is another vendor that's returning to us, but she has so many things that, she, like Suzanne, where she just has so many different things she can show. We're anxious to have her come back on the show. So if you'll welcome back Beryl from Bonash. Hi, Beryl. Hi, Raylene. How are you? I am doing great. I'm so glad to have you back on the show, showing us yet more of your terrific things that you have. So I'm going to turn it right over to you so you can show us. All righty. Well, thank you. I'm just sorry that we couldn't get to Boise and be with you. I spoke to Beth and she sounded as though she was having a whale of a time when I spoke to her on Saturday night. I wish I'd been there to share a glass of wine with her. <laughs> but I'm sure everybody's um, familiar with uh, Bonash for 
the bonding powder um fuse it and some of our other products that we have um we want to show you today because we also do a lot of pressing aids and things to help you so that you don't get starch all over your ironing board or you don't burn or scorch anything so not only do we have fuse it to fix everything let me show you a few of the other things that we do too first of all i just want to start off with our stick on ironing board cover yeah that's right you don't tie it on there's no elastic there's nothing to wiggle and work loose it's actually stuck to the board so when you buy it beth sells these actually lots of of your smaller retail stores do and they look like this so if you can see that that's the packaging of our regular size and in there it comes with a piece of foam padding and it also comes with your piece of fabric and you're going to custom fit so it fits your board perfectly and so all you need to do let me just move things out the way a little bit so i can show you this take your foam and just cut it so it's the size and shape of the top of the ironing board and then you can just use a bit of sticky tape just to hold it in place because then what you're going to do is stick the ironing board cover fabric over the top so just peel it away a couple of inches with the backing paper and it's actually sticky very sticky it's a bit like fly paper so don't peel the whole lot off in one go just do it section by section and what you're going to do is start at your square end and just leave enough to tuck underneath and then you just peel the backing paper all the way down to the other end now once you get to the other end you're going to have a little bit of extra stuff that you don't need so rather than try and stuff it all underneath just take a little craft knife don't use scissors because you'll stick yourself up as you try to cut to cut it and you just trim around just leaving a couple of inches all the way around so that when you go around and tuck it underneath you're actually sticking it to the underside of the board now this will stick to metal it'll stick to the perforated ironing boards it'll go to wood whatever you want to do and i was showing you there with the regular board and once that's actually on there it's going to stay there's no wiggling, there's no moving around. It gives you the perfect ironing surface. And ladies, if you've got a quilting board, then we also do the larger size that fits the biggest boards out there. And you can put them directly onto your quilting board, or you can use a bit of extra padding if you like to feel that padding to put underneath there. This one is actually 65 by 29. And the one for the regular board, well, that one's 19 by um, 59. So it'll fit all your regular boards. But if you've got the extra wide European type, anything like that, then go with this and cut it down. Now, if you have any extra material left over, there's loads of stuff you can do with that. So you can make yourself your little trivet holders, or maybe you want to do this type of thing where you make your oven mitts or maybe an iron holder for when you go to your classes you can just use that and you can stitch through it too just use one of your heavyweight needles now the great thing about the ironing board covers is once they're actually on the board they reflect 300 percent more heat than a regular cotton cover now what does that mean it means that you can iron through all your yardage so think of the time it's going to save you when you come to do stuff your general laundry you can iron one side of your shirt sleeve and the cover irons the other side so you don't have to flip it over isn't that something that's going to save a lot of time but on your yardage well it really is absolutely fantastic because you can just iron one side here I've got it actually folded over. So not only have I done the other side, but look, I've done all the layers 
in between. I think you can see that we've got rid. All you have to do now is just iron over those little creases that were uh, in the center there. So think of the time you can actually save. It's also stain resistant. And for those of you that normally use starches, you can actually wipe it clean. Has anybody got an ironing board cover that looks a bit like that one? Well, with all your starches sticking and all the color dyes and everything, you won't get that because you can actually wipe this over just with a regular little scrubby with a bit of soap and water and you can clean it so it's ready for the next time. The other thing with it, it holds your fabric. So, you know, when you're doing your yardage and you're moving things around, it actually gives a bit of a grip. So when you're doing all of this, you can keep on ironing and it holds it, even something like the silk. So you can get everything over there, but you'll still hold it onto the board itself. And what I think is the best thing and what everybody loves it for, it's resistant to fusibles sticking to it. So your fusibles, your starches, your interfaces. Now, I can only do this part of the demonstration because of what I've got on my iron. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that next. That's our iron shoe. But what I'm doing here, this is on a maximum temperature setting and it's melting the poly bag. Now, I don't expect anybody to actually melt polythene on their ironing board covers at home because on a regular cotton cover, like with your interfaces and all your fusibles, everything goes into the cover itself. But with this, it's actually sticking to the top. So you can actually peel it off there. What a great idea. And you can just keep using over and over again on that cover. They last for ages as well. We've actually sold these at the Houston Quilt Show now for I think it's nearly 20 years. And we have customers that come and rebuy from us. And some of them have had them for 10 years or more. But you know, with regular use, it just depends what you do as to how long it lasts. But one thing I will tell you, it lasts a lot longer than a regular conventional cover. Now, what about the iron shoe? Well, the iron shoe is a great addition for you. And that's what it looks like. Beth loves these. She's always, uh, she's always talking to me about these. She keeps one on her iron. They're actually made of fiberglass and the holes are universal. So this is what it looks like in the packaging like this. And then it fits any size, any shape iron. So you just pull the drawstring tight and fasten it the best way on your iron. And then you can turn it onto the cotton linen setting and you can iron absolutely everything. Now, if you were doing your crazy quilt, you don't have to worry about turning the iron up or down. You can iron over absolutely everything, even a piece of lame or lace, as well as a heavier weight cotton all on that cotton linen setting. So if you're doing something, let me start here where I've got a piece of denim. So this is where I'd normally use it on that high temperature. But if I'm going over the diamantes and the embroidery, I'd normally have to wait for it to regulate and turn down. But now I can iron over my silks, my lames and my metallics. I can do laces and even corduroy on the right side. And what about your black fabric? You won't get a shine anymore. You can iron over everything with the iron shoe. It works wonderfully well. Ladies, if you do any knitting and you want to do a bit of blocking, this is perfect. And look, I can iron over both the wool and the suede elbow piece. And again, everything is perfectly done. What about your minky? Everybody complains about this, but with your iron shoe, you can iron over the top without actually crushing anything at all. One of those pieces of fabric that nobody likes to do. But remember with the iron shoe, whoops. Oh, that's what I forgot to tell you. It obviously fell down. So I, I could remember to tell you this, the ironing board cover there, the bit of fabric left over, that's an old boat. And so if you want to have a little piece at the side of the sewing machine as your little area to iron on, well, 
that's a great idea to do that. And for classroom situations, anybody who's got a store, what a great idea to put in your classrooms and you can do those very, very easily. What was I doing? I was looking for another piece of this. So again, a piece of plastic and we can melt it. And with the iron shoe on there, I don't have to worry because everything is going to just peel away because nothing sticks to it. Fusible starches, interfacings, all of those things, they all just wipe clean. So if you've got that problem on the base of your iron that always you've got a mess, this is what you need. And again, you see what I mean. Nothing sticks to the iron shoe. And where we've got it on the top of the ironing board cover, we're going to be able to peel it off. So it really does work wonderfully well. So that's our iron shoe. And that's a great way, thing to keep in your sewing room when you're working with all those different fabrics. Another great idea. And this is one of our prize, the prize that we're giving away today is the Fusion Press. Now the Fusion Press is a double-sided piece. One side is the ironing board cover fabric and the other side is the fiberglass impregnated with Teflon. It's a non-stick surface. So for when you're traveling, it's great because it folds up to take with you. You can just pop it in your sewing bag. In an RV, it works absolutely great because there's never enough room for a large ironing board. And the great thing is, if you're working with paints, glues, any of those type of things, anything that goes on the sheet, I'll just show you here. This is E6000, is that what it's called? That really sticky stuff. But you see how it just literally peels off? And what about nail polish? I just have a little bit left. I used this previously and just kind of... Nail polish doesn't come off anything, does it, ladies? Except your fingernails. But it really does work great. So as a non-stick surface, that is absolutely fantastic. And then as your ironing surface, it really does work great. Because it's exactly what I explained here on the ironing board, except it's a portable surface. And this normally sells at $29.99. So that's your uh, door prize, one of the door prizes today that we've given for you. Now, last but not least, we also have our ironing mat. I don't know whether Fern can just kind of, this is what it looks like here. And it's the same sort of fiberglass, except it's got holes in. So what this means is, it, it's a bit like the iron shoe as protection, because you can't burn or scorch or damage anything. It doesn't crush the pile neither. So if you're doing embroidery and working with fibers, it's great because it allows the steam to go through there. And so if you're working with the fusibles that need to be steam set, this is what you need to use, because again, nothing's going to stick to it. But if you're working with your fibers, your really delicate stuff, Angelina's and embroidery, you can iron over, you do not crush any of the pile or the fibers. So you can, any of your 3D effects, again, it doesn't get crushed. You can see what you're doing. If you're working with applique, it works great as well. And you can use it. So it's horses for courses, I would say, whether this is something that works for you best or whether the um, iron shoe. Normally, you wouldn't have the iron shoe if I was using um, this. You don't have to have that. But just to save a bit of time, I'm just working with the same iron. Because when the iron shoe is on there, you don't lose any of the power. So you still get the full steam and the full temperature like cotton linen, and you don't have to worry about it. So you can work with any of those. It really is. It's, it, they're just fantastic. So there are lots of pressing aids that we do. On our website, we've got a whole load of other stuff as well. So you can actually see videos of all the different ways you can use our, our, our different products. You can see how to fix the ironing board if you forget on the cover. And all of those, we try and give you all the how-tos, along with the Fuse It powder, of course, with all the different ways that you can actually use that. So check us out because we also have 
cleaning products and um, fabric embellishment that comes from England. And we have a fantastic furniture polish. And, you know, if you've never seen all our other stuff, you just need to go on there and check us all out. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I hope you like a little bit of learning other things that we do, not just the fusip powder. And I hope to see you all soon at one of the shows and keep on coming here. Thank you. Carol, that was so awesome. And I ha I've been kind of laughing. I know a lot of people typed in questions, but guys, we are, again, we're going to probably ask you to type those in again at the end of the show because it's just really hard not to miss any. But I have to laugh. One of our regulars, Kathleen, at the beginning of your presentation was saying, oh, I have everything she has. And then everything you showed, she go, but wait, I don't have that. How did I miss that? So Kathleen, I saw you and you, you gave me a good chuckle. So I hope to see you back at the end of the show, Beryl, and we'll get to all those questions. Yes, Thank will. you. All right. Okay, guys, it's contest time. Now, again, I just want to go through this for anybody that's new with us uh, this week. I'm going to give you a special word. You're going to type in that word in the comments, and that's all you have to do. You're only going to type it in one time. Please just once, or it takes it longer for me to go through them all to get the winner. And then, hopefully by 6 o'clock Pacific time, so a couple of hours after the show, Come back to the Quilt Craft Sew Facebook page. Look for the big picture that says, it's real colorful and it says winner. I tried to make it easy to find the post. And there I will list all the people who won and what you won and what you need to do. So are you guys ready? Today's special word is Oklahoma because that's our next show. It's a new location and we're so excited to go. So I decided today would be a good day for the secret word to be Oklahoma. Okay, next up, we have another returning vendor. And just like the other, she has so many amazing things to show. We could have her on like every time we do this. But uh, so we're gonna welcome back Beyond Interiors. Hello, are you there? Hi, how are you? I'm great. It's so good to have you back. And, you know, I've had to do so much extra talking that I'm, I'm causing us to run over. So I'm going to turn it over to you and I'll let you get going. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be back. We always appreciate being uh, highlighted. Anyway, our business is Beyond Interiors. My business partner, Leanne and I, Leanne Scott, and I'm Julie Miller. We have had this business for almost 25 years. So as it has progressed, we have, you know, we always buy what we love. So today we're going to talk about uh, Aboriginal fabric. It is one of our true loves. We have uh, been selling it for about 15 years now. Um, but part of the trick is obviously we sell the fabric for you to do as you choose. But also I do table runners and napkins. I also do pot holders and like wine bottle things, which I'll kind of show you in a little bit. But the focus today so we, I do these table runners, and this is an example. So these are these wonderful Aboriginal fabrics. They're so unique. They're so interesting. They're always, um, the people that buy them, they're always just fascinated. They said their friends come over and they're just like, oh my God, what is that? What have you done? So part of the trick with these, um, with these fabrics. They're originated in Australia. They are um, specially designed. And then the fabric quality is just wonderful. It's just absolutely wonderful. So what I wanna kind of explain, for you to make one of these runners, generally speaking, I use a two yard piece you can use a yard and a half piece if you, if you have a smaller table and each works out fine. The two yard piece is, will give you eight napkins. So you need two fabrics of two yards. This will give you a table runner and eight napkins. So the, so the, um, the math turns out, if, the way I designed it, the math turns out really well. So this is what the napkins, they're an 18 inch and they come like in four. So you can either buy them from us that are already made or you can obviously buy, you know, purchase the fabric. If you buy the fabric, think about your choices beforehand. Basically what you want to consider 
is it's been my experience that what really looks good is you choose a slightly dominant and a slightly recessive pattern. Now, often that can be color. It can also be size. So in this example, you have a larger pattern, which I've chosen to put in the middle, and then you have the accent pattern, which in this case is, a, is more monochromatic. And that creates a really nice um, balance. In this pattern, it is a yin and a yang. So you are black on white and then white on black. So that creates a nice contrast. In this one, you have, this is, this is really a neat one. Leanne and I are ocean people, so we particularly love this pattern. Let's see here. I can never do this right. Ah, there we go. So the pattern here is an ocean style pattern. So this is where the turtles live. And then this is where all the rest of the fishies in the sea live. And it just turns out to blend really nicely. In this one, it's an Aboriginal pattern that has um, uh, features kangaroos and then these beautiful circles, which is a very typical Aboriginal um, pattern in, in their culture is that many, many circles that, um, appear in, all, in their patterns. So that's a very popular uh, style. So if you choose to, obviously, um, if you would like to purchase the runners and the napkins, they're separate. Um, so you can, you can choose the runner and then some people like completely different colored napkins so that there'll be a contrast and then other people like matching. So whatever your heart desires is fine. If you're interested in purchasing the fabric and making the runner, what you're going to want to do is cut. So you have the fabric and you have the selvage and then you have the folded edge. You start on the selvage edge always and you cut straight down the whole two yard piece and then cut it into 18 inch squares. So you go 18 inches in from the selvage, you cut then a square 18 inches down in two yards of fab, four, it'll be four yards total, but in two yards of fabric with two contrasting pieces, you will get two sets of four napkins. What you're going to be ending up with is a piece like this. It's about seven inches. And that's what you're gonna use. The reason you want to be careful is because if you cut it from the fold, you're gonna have all narrow pieces. If you cut it from the selvage, you're gonna have the one, the one wide piece. So you wanna take the one wide piece and then from there, you can cut the secondary piece lengthwise in half and that will give so the math will, will work out. It's, I think it's about three and a half inches for the narrow piece and about seven. You're gonna to want to use the, um, oh God, what's it called? Seam binding or um, bias, bias tape. tape, bias tape. And you just literally sew the bias tape because it highlights. It will highlight the, uh, whoops, there you go. It highlights the, the um the contrast between the two the two fabrics so that they don't fight fight with each other and then at the end you go you take a plain i just use plain black i mean that just makes sense to me you could use a beige you can use you can use a, a fabric and make uh the runner reversible if that works and then you take this is bias tape and then you take another kind of tape which is the fold over quilting tape. It's the same width and then you can edge. So in the end you edge the material. So it's the same width in the end and it has covered over the selvage and then just stitches onto the back. So basically you're just gonna end up with a, a two very interesting pieces. It's a great conversation piece these fabrics are just so interesting. We have pot holders that you can uh, that you can buy. We also have um, Japanese anime. It is so cute. 
you, it's always a conversation piece. It's like these little, you know, these little interesting creatures running all over the place, you know, like a, like a surfing ninja and, you know, little hamburger man running all over. So these are other very simple um, examples of Aboriginal fabric. We have a large uh, selection of the Aboriginal fabric. And then this is, these are examples of, well, my fingies here, there we go, of Japanese anime. And again, they're just, they're just so funny. They, they make their own, they make their own story. So what we, um, what we are offering the, let's see here, what we are offering is a, this week is 15% uh, off all the Aboriginal fabric and what we can what we call the Hawaiiana as well as the um, uh, anime fabric. So 15% off that, that's our show special. And we also have a coupon special for our Laurel Birch fabrics. She was a wonderful designer in the 60s that as soon as you see her things, you'll never, you'll never forget them. She's just a fabulous. So we have cat fabric. We have um, more cat fabrics. <laughs> we have jelly rolls. I made a quilt for my grandson. This is the greatest invention of all time. I'm sure you who are quilters and seamstresses know this. It is precise. It is perfect. Your project just turns out wonderful because it's square. And in addition to the uh, fabrics with the, the kitties, here is an example. We, these are panels and you can get them in, an, in a variety. So this is one panel and you can get them in a variety of sizes. You can get uh, two panels. So you could going this way or this way, you could get a four inch or not a four inch, a four panel piece. If you want to do, this is a beautiful project for like a simple kids quilt. Both Leanne and I made quilts for our new grandchildren and the kids just go crazy because they're just such beautiful, you know, they're just such beautiful, colorful renditions. We have, we're obsessed with Laurel Birch. We have t-shirts, my personal favorite. She's on the side and then Oops, other kitty is over on this side. There we go. Is that right? No. There we go. And uh, so those are really, really cute. And then one other example would be this one. This is a three quarter length. The perfect length as far as I'm concerned. You can push it up if it's hot and you can stay warm if it's cool. So that's that's the kitties are at the bottom of the... Uh, Anyway, we can make whatever your heart desires as far as um, we make the runners and the uh, pot holders. We, if you want to, if you just tell me what, what is of interest and in patterns, um, we can make it or you can buy the fabric and um, make it yourself. We are always offering free shipping on any purchase over $100. And an example, one last example is, um, this is a runner. This is the Laurel Birch fabric. And this is an example of being able to use fabric. It's the same pattern, but it is a different color scheme, but it uses a, sim a simple, um, a simple, a, a palette, a color palette. That's very simple. That's very compatible. So that's another another way that you can go. So we appreciate your business. We appreciate your interest. Thank you, Julie. That was I'm awesome. <laughs> that was so, so that was so cool. I'm so glad to see everybody is staying healthy and we're starting to be able to get a life again. And please continue with good health and enjoy your friends and uh Hopefully we'll see each other in person next year. Hopefully. And uh, well, hopefully you'll stay around till the end um, for our question and answer period after our yeah. next vendor. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, guys, um, this is your last reminder. The secret word for today is Oklahoma. 
And uh, by the way, Julie Coleman, you commented about the song. I cannot spell that name without singing that song. So don't feel bad. She commented, is she the only one that sang it? So <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I've been doing that. Everything I've been typing up, the newsletters and everything, I have to sing it in my head. So, okay. So our next vendor and our final vendor for today, I'm so excited to have her on. We've been trying to get her scheduled and trying to make this all happen for a while. So we would like to welcome Jackie from the Colorado Creations Quilting. And she is going to give us a wonderful tour of all the many wonderful things she has to offer. So hi, Jackie. Hi there. Thank you, everybody. Hey, we're going to turn it all over to you. So take it away. OK. As she said, I am Jackie, and I'm from Colorado Creations Quilting. I live uh, in Erie, Colorado, that's kind of north uh, of the state uh, next to Boulder. Um, so how I started my business, um, I started teaching years ago. I don't want to date myself, but um, as I was teaching, I de decided to start designing quilts. Uh, that was more fun than making the little quarter inch seams for me. And so I design quilts. So if there's any shops out there, I do sell wholesale. Uh, but as I was teaching, uh, especially the art quilts, people and students were asking me, well, where do I get that fabric? So um, along came kits to go with the uh, class I was teaching. And then from there, uh, buying fabric was just addicting. So I don't know if any of you have that problem. Um, but I do in my own personal stash and the shop here. So as you can see, um, I am a landscape artist for the most part. So I sell things like desert and grass, um, wildflowers. Uh, I am one of the fortunate few in the lower 48 states that are able to uh, sell custom prints by Hoffman. Uh, so... I have quite a selection of those in stock. Um, again, there's skies and water, trees, rocks, bark, uh, flowers, both, as I said, wildflowers and your home domestic flowers, um, birds and bees and, and hedgehogs and woolly uh, sheep. So a little bit of everything, wildlife, um, I also have an avid fisherman in my uh, family, so I have to keep the trout on hand. Uh, at least I don't have to eat them. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is a new one that just came in today. I'm hoping to get it on the website within the next week or so called Peacock Flourish. We've got a couple of panels here and I've got a quilt design in my head already for this. So hopefully I can get that out soon and also uh, some of the coordinating line. As I said, I do a lot of kits. So here's my kitting fabrics here for all of my um, original designs. Uh, it's mostly the artwork that I do kits on, but I do have a few for some of the pieced quilts. I do both uh, patterns, pieced and artwork. Uh, I carry a lot of panels too, because they have nature on them and they're fun to work with. You'll see in a minute. Uh, here's a little one that's rather new. Had a little nephew and so I thought he needed a grow chart. So you'll get a starter kit. You can buy the pattern only or you can get a starter kit that has like the main 3D leaves and, and you can pick blue or pink accents or if you want neutral gender, all you gotta do is give me a, a hello on the contact page of my website and I'll respond to you. I try to respond within 24 hours. So let's uh, go back this way. Uh, today, I'm trying to finish off what I have. I have a few kits left of the Rockport Carriel, much larger and a little bit smaller is the Rockport Tote. So um, today you get the entire package of fusibles and handles and snaps, whatever you need to make that quilt. All you have to do is supply your favorite fabrics and maybe some buttons and uh, 
you're done. It's a fairly easy one to make and you'll get all the supplies. Um, it's $20 off each kit right now. I rarely uh, take discounts on kits because they're time consuming to put together. But today, this kit is $20 off and I just have a few left. Um, I'm also getting into cutting laser cuts of um, fusible wildlife, um, trees, whatever you need, I can make it for you. Um, they will be just silhouettes, uh, nothing with great detail, but uh, they are pretty popular. They have some fusible on the back. All you have to do is tear off the paper and place it on a project, whether it be a pillow or the center of your quilt block. Um, put the iron to it. I do give some instructions. How do you do that? And there you go. You don't have to spend hours cutting that out. Can't tell you how many times when I made the prototype for this guy, how many times I cut off his antlers before I got a good one. So you don't need to worry about things like that. Um, I sell by the half yard on my shop, on my website. And, uh, but I do occasionally, I was getting ready for the Denver merchandise, uh, excuse me, Denver show in uh, Arapahoe County Fairgrounds. I'm sorry, I'm stumbling because we had to move this year due to COVID. Um, so there's various bundles of these ready to go and they're fat yard, uh, fat quarters, excuse me. So like I said, normally I sell by the half yard, but the bundles are fat quarters. Uh, this is one of my more popular little uh, designs. It's a sewing machine cover. Uh, I do have the stabilizer uh, that's needed to give it its shape. So um, the sewing machines that uh, it can handle are smaller ones with maybe a seven inch throat space up to about 11 inch throat space. So It'll do big sewing machines, but it won't necessarily do um, embroidery machines. So I'm working on that one. Uh, as we get going here, like I said, over the time, I have designed several patterns. So a lot of them are holidays. I love the holidays. Uh, a lot of them are table runners, um, placemats, smaller items, but I do have some large designs also. So um, for instance, this one here is called Fun and Done. It's a, a piece I've made and you quilt as you go. So it's a great one because you can do it in holiday themes like this one, uh, maybe seasonal themes, or if you just have a couple of choices of fabric that you really like that go together well, you can make one out of that. Um, I also have a couple of kits called 10 minute table runners. If you're speedy in cutting the fabric, you really can do it in 10 minutes. Otherwise it might take you 15. I've added a few big buttons here to give it a little bit of bling. Uh, so uh, let's see, what else do I have? As I said, I like panels. So this is one of uh, last year's pattern I designed. And I still have a few kits for that. But as you can see, I, I have a several patterns that I use panels with. Um, this is my most popular art quilt. It's called Colorado Creations. No, it's not. That's the name of my store. It's called Colorado Escape. Um, it uses raw edge fusible applique. So everything I do as far as um, artwork, I use fusible of some type. And I have that on my shop, the two favorites I like to use. Uh, this is another one. Uh, they say artists should work in a series. So I've got one called Sunsets and Silhouettes. And this is Rocky Mountain National Park. We saw a couple of uh, elk button horns one year and I put that one together. And here's one, uh, another one of the Sunset and Silhouette series. We were in Alaska a few years ago and the sun was still up at midnight. So I went out on the porch and happened to see these three bears walking across the tundra. That one's called Evening Stroll. So all of those patterns I do have in both a pattern only and in kits. 
And this is our state flower here in Colorado, Columbine. So it comes in a couple of different colors too. But as I said, I do both artwork and I do some piece work here. Um, this one's called Stars and Strips. It started out as a quilt of valor for Memorial Day for a, a soldier that came home from war. And uh, this, um, the pattern took off, Stars and Strips. And then I started updating it in different colors. So it really changes its effect. Uh, today's, what do I want to say, special, show special today. Um, besides the kits that are $20 off, I have this Ripples uh, kit. What? And uh, this kit, sorry, uh, communication here. Uh, we can do it in black, white. Let's see what the other colors I have. As far as backgrounds, I have black, white, a royal blue, and a gray. So you have options of that. And then on top of that, you'll get a layer cake with all these beautiful batiks, really vibrant batiks. And finally, I will choose to go with it um, a yard of batik of some color that we have in stock that I think will go well with this. Uh, the other option is you can contact me on the website and here's our website information. So it's www.coloradocreationsquilting. Uh, at the bottom of every page, there's a contact uh, button you can hit and you can tell me instead of blue border, I'd rather have a pink border. And I'll try to make that work for you. I also have a newsletter that gives you up live and personal information about what's going on uh, with the shop, with uh, the store. Um, I also put blog posts on there for motivation and inspiration. Um, let's see. If you don't want to contact me through the website, you can always give me a jingle. Uh, and I guess the other thing I'm missing here is the weekly special through the mall is back quarter bundles and they're bundle 15, a discount code you have to put in at checkout. Otherwise, if you like the ripples, that's this one. If you like that one, you want to put in discount code ripples. Um, with this kit, you also get the pattern free. So just want to mention that the pattern is free. And then on top of that, you get $20 off the kit with the discount. Well, I spoke really fast. I hope you understood me. Uh, we see. did. We did understand you. And we got a lot of terrific information. It was so nice to see all that beautiful fabric, Jackie. We so appreciate you coming on and sharing all that with us. So my door prize today is three patterns. They'll be in download mode so you can get them as a PDF, uh, the minute you hear and, and let me know that you're the winner. Uh, I have a, again, another pattern of mine with a pattern uh, panel. So that's another pro size. I have a wall hanging, but I did that for Memorial Day. And then uh, the fun and done you saw earlier. So you'll get these three patterns of mine. Awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you'll stick around for a few minutes. We're going to be doing our question and answer here in just a little bit. Thank Great. you so much, Jackie. Okay, guys. Um, by the way, Margie, I saw what you said. The word is Oklahoma. We're going to give you a break today and let you get that word after the fact since you had to walk away for a minute. And uh, uh, just a couple things before we go to the question and answer. I wanted, you know, Beth and I don't get much chance to demo on the show because we're doing the hosting and everything, but I have a brand new product that I'm so excited about, and it's actually going to be my weekly special starting Friday. So you'll have to wait till Friday to buy it, but it is, I'm going to see if I can get it up in here. It is called the Blade Saver Thread Cutter, and this is for when you're doing your chain sewing, but here's what makes this unique. <laughs> this little star you open that up and inside you put your used rotary cutter blades, your used 48 millimeter blade. 
you stick it in the little stand and then you can quickly do your chain cutting. But here's the best part. When you're done using it, the base opens up, the cutter goes inside and then there's magnets to hold it closed so it stores so easily in a drawer taking up very very little space they come in six different colors and again you're gonna have to wait till friday but those will be on the weekly specials page under filters haven okay so ron is gonna uh, get everybody brought back in right now we're gonna do our little you know brady bunch style to get everybody back in for the q a so if you have questions for any of our vendors now is the time to type those in and then I will field those to them as they come in. So looks like our first question. I'm going to hang on just a second. I'm going to slide the computer around so I can see it better. <laughs> uh, question for Jackie. What are the sizes of the Rockport totes? Can you hear oh, us, Jackie? Um, <laughs> I can. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, shoot. I don't have the uh, pattern, but compared to me, I'm only five foot tall, though, so that's not helpful. But it goes uh, from my shoulder all the way down to my uh, knees. And the other one, let's see. I'm a quilter. I should have a ruler around here. Why don't I come back to you in a moment? Yeah, that's I'll fine. That's fine. Okay, let's see. Here. Um, we have a question for Beryl Bone Ash, and that is, what is the perfect for t-shirt quilts? So what of your products should they use for t-shirt quilts? For t-shirt quilt, why you want to line over the fabrics, then it would be the iron shoe I would recommend. And the shoe. if you're using for the t-shirt fabric, you can use the bonding powder um, for fusing the pieces. That's what happens when you have a sign behind you that said, great for t-shirt quilts. <laughs> they saw that sign. <laughs> okay, bone ash. And I know the answer to this, but I'm going to let you answer this, Beryl. Uh, what do you have to clean the bottom of your iron? Oh, we have our iron clean sheets, which are absolutely fantastic. I showed those the last time I was um, on. Uh, what was that, about a month ago? And you just lay one of these sheets on top of a paper towel you drape it over the edge of your ironing board and you just simply wipe your iron over it and it takes all the gunk and residue off the base of the iron and you actually get 10 of those sheets in a pack and um each sheet you can use over and over and over again so basically and oh and i forgot to tell everybody everything we're doing today our special is free shipping awesome uh suzanne Calico yeah. Cubby's first responder. What is the size and cost of that panel? It's eleven sixty nine, and it, I'm sorry, it's not. Um, give me a minute. I'll, <laughs> give me a minute. And I'll look it up for you. But it's twenty four inches wide, forty four inches long. Yeah, remember, guys, her UPS man just dropped this off before the show, <laughs> so give her a second to figure that one out. Okay, um, let's see. The comments are bouncing around. I can't focus on them here. Okay, uh, Pam uh, for Beryl again. Pam would like to know. She says she has the bone ash pre the bone ash pressing sheet. Does she need to use them if she has the iron shoe? The iron shoe is meant to be used with steam, and so the steam can actually come through, and you have the holes in the iron shoe. Whereas the fiberglass pressing sheet is a thinner fiberglass it allows the heat to penetrate better to melt the powder better so we always recommend you use the fiberglass pressing sheet with the powder and the iron shoe if you're just doing regular um ironing but you can use the iron shoe if you want to just make sure you melt the powder correctly so it's just like so many of our items. It's not a one size fits all. And sometimes you just need multiple things. Yeah. And then Jenny, uh, Jenny asked of you, Beryl, also what the cost of the iron shoe is. $15.99. Great. Um, Beyond Interiors, Julie, do you have any dog fabric? You showed all your cats. So they want to know if you have dogs. That's a good question. Laurel Birch periodically has these absolutely wonderful dog 
patterns, but they haven't been out recently. And she only chooses one one animal kingdom form at a time. So at the moment, I'm sorry, we do not, but we will in the future. <laughs> we have we have a couple of other really cute. We have monsters. We have monsters and aliens. We have spaceships, and we have robots. We have robots. So awesome. We're scrolling. <laughs> Scrolling through here real quick, just I hope we didn't miss any questions. I think we got to all of them, but if you had a question that didn't get answered, retype it in right now and it'll be the last thing that pops up so I'll be able to find it. And uh, actually, Judy, I see your question about did you make your jacket, but I think that's probably for Beryl. She looks like she's the only one wearing a jacket. <laughs> no, I didn't. I oh, wait. Yeah, see. maybe it was oh, Colorado. Yeah, about the Aliso. <laughs> that actually might I don't I can't remember now what Jackie's wearing. Are you wearing a jacket, Jackie? I am not. Uh, okay, so it must have been Beryl. <laughs> yeah. You never know whether it's gonna be twenty degrees or yeah. eighty. Yeah. Oh that was guys, that was the funny part about That's being in Boise. Though. We the almost died. Carry all. <laughs> Oh, I did. There's that other question we didn't see. This was for, this would also be for Beryl. Um, Cindy said, sewing on the minky with her, re or sewing, I mean, ironing on the minky with her regular iron, she lost her little dots. Will that happen if she's using the shoe? No, I actually ironed over a piece of minky in the demonstration and you don't lose the dots. Awesome. And Jackie, um, another question for Jackie. Uh, where is it at? <laughs> oh, what is the size of that state flower panel that you showed, the Colorado state uh, flower? Uh, that one is about 40 inches by 50. Again, these are wall quilts that are meant to hang on the wall. So um, they're smaller in size. Awesome. And as far as the Rockport carryall, um, that large one is 16 by 16 high, 20 wide, and six deep. And then this smaller one here is 11 high by 14 wide and about three deep. Perfect. Thank you for getting back to us on that. And then, um, Beryl, the iron shoe, will it work on the Aliso pop up iron? It'll work on the iron if it's got the button where you the feet don't have, you know, you can switch the feet off kind of thing. Because the iron shoe is taking the place of the feet because it's protecting everything from the heat of the iron. Um, but you couldn't get the feet popping through the cover itself unless you want to cut a hole exactly where your feet are on the iron. Awesome. Um, Suzanne, um, some, uh, uh, Chris is asking if uh, Plum Easy's first pattern using prayer points, was that a pin cushion? Do you recall? I don't remember. The first ones I've done were the pot holders. They do, I believe, have a pin cushion. They also have a Christmas ornament, which I have patterns for. And that awesome. panel, the panel price is $7.75. Perfect. Thank you for getting back to us with that as well. Well, I think we finally got through all the questions. Um, guys, don't worry. If you find you have a question later, we try to go back and, you know, kind of monitor this again later in the day. But the best thing to do is just contact the vendor directly through their website. And again, the fastest way to find today's presenters is to go to the quiltcraftsomall.com. Click on Wild Wednesday and all four of today's presenters are going to pop up there for you along with what their discount is and a link to get right through to their website. So that's all of our show for today. Um, this was a great show. I'm so excited that, that you know, we've been able to continue on with it. I just want to remind everyone again that our next live show is in Oklahoma City at the fairgrounds and I believe it's the Pavilion Building. But be sure if you have not already that you go to to, um, the quiltcraftsew.com website and sign up for their email list because you can select which shows you want to be informed about and you will find out uh, you know, a week or so before the show, you'll be able to view 
what the coupons are that we'll have for the show, what the program is. And you know, the wonderful thing about Oklahoma is we are back to having the free classes, which we were not able to do in Boise. So we'll be doing our free classes. We'll have all the fun things going on that you are used to with Quilt Craft Sewing Festival. But for those of you who are from all over the country and nowhere near where we're gonna be, we're just excited that we're going to be able to continue doing our special live broadcast right from the show floor for three days, even uh, and as far as we know, we're going to be doing this for the rest of the year because we want to stay connected with you. So guys, thank you so much. Again, I will have those winners posted hopefully by six o'clock Pacific time tonight. We thank you so much as always for all your continued support. And we just want you to go out and make it a creative week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you.